Hello and welcome back. I thought this guy was supposed to be gone by now. Instead, I'm forced to sit here and listen to this Crisco pork fat encased meat sack throw a tantrum over his political opponents attempting to hold Democrats to their own standards. You're not allowed to do that. They can deny elections, hatch insane conspiracy theories based on actual Russian disinformation, and call you a racist all they want. But if you do any of those things or call them a groomer, well then the rules suddenly change. Howard, what do you see when you're scanning the right-wing media world, uh, seeing these headlines? Uh, the Daily Caller, those sites, they say Democrats are the ones trying to steal elections, trying to destroy democracy. So we should be clear, there's a house of mirrors things going on, uh, a phenomenon going on here. Oh no, not that. Yes, those are mirrors. And you see that sweaty pile of mashed potatoes looking reflection? That's you! Excuse me folks, we'll get right back into the video, but first I gotta show you something that I've been super excited to get in the mail, and it finally arrived. Flip City Magazine. I cannot tell you how excited I was to get a real printed magazine in the mail that I actually wanted to read. Not the spam junk that I'm typically used to getting, but something that's actually entertaining. Remember the old American tradition of mocking bad ideas and laughing at them? That's exactly what Flip City is. A satirical magazine for the culture wars. You all know my sense of humor, and I think you'll really enjoy this hilarious, 100% independent, uncensored platform. And let me let me tell you, they do not pull punches on this thing. I swear, when they say it's an uncensored free speech platform, they mean it. We're all fighting the culture wars. Flip City Magazine does it with art and comedy. Seriously, folks, go ahead and check this out. It's hilarious, and it's genuinely nice to get a real printed magazine in the mail that you actually want to read, and enjoy reading it without having to stare at a computer screen. Flip City Magazine wants you to laugh while it's still legal. So subscribe at flipcitymag.com, or just click the link in the description below. Howard, what do you see when you're scanning the right-wing media world, uh, seeing these headlines? Uh, the Daily Caller, those sites, they say Democrats are the ones trying to steal elections, trying to destroy democracy. So we should be clear, there's a house of mirrors thing going on, there's a, a phenomenon going on here. Get the flip-flop shit on me! Flip-flop in, in your face! Don't pray to be flipping the shit! It's Democrats and folks like Brian Stelter that are the actual threat to this country. And I personally base that on the standards that they make up and try to hold us to. For example, since at least the year 2000, every single election that Democrats have lost, they claimed was stolen or illegitimate. Every single time, Democrats attempt to decertify states' votes and overturn the election. Or coerce electors to change their votes. They are the ones who originally started propagating conspiracy theories and sowing distrust in the election system. Just go down the list of all the things they now call an attack on democracy as part of their anti-Republican narrative. And they're guilty of every single one of those things. Big pothole on the road to the Bush inaugural. Rumors of a congressional challenge to the election results are picking up steam on the eve of the certification of the Electoral College numbers. You say it's just a protest, but it does bring attention to the problem of our system when it comes to voting here in the United States. We've got an electoral system out there that doesn't work. We spend more on prison food yep. in this country than elections. What they want to do, in part, is to highlight what they call the massive disenfranchisement as uh, Representative Conyers said in the letter that you just presented, of voters in Ohio. So many voters were disenfranchised, they said, that the Ohio vote and the result of the presidential election are still in doubt. The outcome, of course, was not changed, delayed less than three hours. Though Republican leaders like Congressman DeLay and Ohio Republican Chair Bob Bennett treated it as if the Capitol had been pillaged by the Visigoths. The Democrats knew that it was a pretty ceremonial objection, but regarded it as important. Why did both sides treat this like political dynamite? Well, it would have been nice if both sides could get on a more bipartisan footing and look at these problems. I think Senator Boxer made an excellent point today when she said we've got soldiers abroad dying uh, for democracy but and we need to fix our own democracy here at home. To think that our voting machines are too vulnerable. For researchers have repeatedly de demonstrated that ballot recording machines and other voting systems are susceptible to tempering. Even hackers with limited prior knowledge, tools, and resources are able to breach voting machines in a matter of minutes. In 2018, electronic voting machines in Georgia and Texas deleted votes for certain candidates or switched votes from one candidate to another. The biggest seller of voting machines is doing something that violates 
Cybersecurity 101, directing that you install remote access software, which would make a machine like that, you know, a magnet for fraudsters and hackers. These voting machines can be hacked quite easily. You could easily hack into them. It makes it seem like all these states are doing different things, but in fact, three companies are controlling them. An external party could access the machine's wireless feature to, quote, record voting data or inject malicious data. There are a lot of states that are dealing with antiquated machines right which are vulnerable to being hacked silence peasant it's completely different when we do it what we actually see happening here since the year 2000 is a gradual escalation every time democrats lose an election this escalation started and driven by democrats led up to a moment where republicans finally called an election stolen and did all of the things democrats had previously done the fact is the media simply never reported on those things in the same way that we see them now reporting since biden was elected and to some does bring it up then we get the typical leftist reassurances that it's totally different when they're doing it okay so now we've established that election denial asking questions about the voting machines and generally sowing distrust in the election system has been driven by democrats up until 2016 and now <laughs> we punish ourselves some more. There's a big difference between saying election skeptics and um, I don't know, democracy destroyers. Democracy destroyers? What the f How did you think about the writing, the choice of language for your recent article? It's really tough because I think you don't want to be too dismissive of these folks. You don't want people to sort of assume that, that they're so crazy you shouldn't even pay attention to them. Um, but you don't, you also don't want to, I think calling them election skeptics is a little bit too polite. Um, most of these people are beyond skepticism. I occasionally, I mean, I, at a magazine, I sort of have a little more free reign to call them what I want. Um, I sometimes call them liars. Being clear about the threat to democracy is one of the most important things that American journalists can do. Well, it's the responsibility of journalists to report the facts. <laughs> and I completely understand why covering Trump's potential candidacy in 2024 is an extremely important story. I mean, this is a person that's actively subverting American democracy. So you see, if their political opponents win elections and don't for a second believe that it's just for Trump, it doesn't matter who the Republican nominee is. They'll say the exact same things. But if that happens, it means their warped version of democracy is under attack, which will then give them even more justification in their heads to continue being the actual authoritarian threat to this country. Just use your imagination to see how bad this could all go. All right, folks, that's it for that one. Thanks a lot for watching. Please, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button, share and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.